to MTBXP. I'm David. Do you remember that fork I got from China a while back ago? Well, today we're gonna take it apart. Things you're gonna need are a four millimeter hex wrench, five millimeter hex wrench, six millimeter hex wrench, pliers, a shop rag or towels, a 24 millimeter socket, preferably a six point socket wrench, a stove or heat gun for any bolts that are difficult to remove. First thing you wanna do is remove the air and then get a set of pliers to remove the rebound adjust knob. So with the knob removed, use a five millimeter hex wrench to loosen the damper side bolt and then remove it. From here, you can just see that it's just a four millimeter hex wrench that you use to adjust the rebound. So here's a closer look of the rebound adjust knob. So all it really was was just a four millimeter hex wrench um, it comes with a spring and a ball to kind of lock it into place and as you can kind of see here that it will go into the, this hollowed out screw and there's some grooves there so when that ball kind of gets those specific grooves it makes that clicking sound. Here's what these pieces look like when put into each other so you can see that the knob inserts into the screw right here and at the very end is that four millimeter wrench that's just sticking out of it for you to adjust your rebound. So let's move on to the air spring side which you'll need is a six millimeter hex wrench and just loosen and remove the screw on the bottom and once you do that you can then remove the fork lower. On the air spring side looks like there's a rubber stopper here for when you bottom out and on the opposite side it looks like they're using a cartridge damper. Taking a closer look, you'll see that there's a set screw inside the cartridge damper and as you move the set screw outward, it'll give you a faster rebound and then as you move the set screw inward, it'll slow down your rebound. As you can see, when not locked out, the damper shaft moves. And when we lock out the fork, you can see that the damper shaft does not move. After removing the cap, you'll see behind it is an hex socket that's used to adjust the lockout. To remove the damper, big warning here, the metal is really soft and I almost stripped it using an adjustable wrench. So I would recommend using a 24 millimeter socket, a 6.1 instead of a 12 point, because the 12 point will likely strip the shoulders right off. Here's the damper. It was a little dry inside. The O-rings were not lubed up very well. The threads weren't greased up very well either, but here it is. From the markings on the damper, the manufacturer is WDF, which stands for wonderful. Model number AM1873-1. I was able to actually look this part up on the manufacturer's website and was able to get some specs. And now the link below in the description. Moving to the air spring side, this is the rubber stopper. So we're just gonna remove it. You can see that it's tapered on one end so that it fits into the end cap of the stanchion. Again, the same warning as before, just the soft metal and the bolts, just make sure that you use a socket. I also used the stove for this side, just because they were really stuck. So heat it up with the stove, loosen things up a bit, and they were able to loosen rather easily. So what I'm trying to show here is that the bolt head height is about 1.85 millimeters, which is really, really short. Combine that with the soft metal, you can really, really mar it up like I did here using adjustable wrench. So again, socket recommended. With the end cap removed, you can move the air shaft just by pulling it out. Interesting find here, there are two spacers that measure about 10 millimeters each, which means that we might be able to change the travel. Confirming my suspicions, hidden underneath the fork lower are markings for 160 millimeters of travel, so this might actually be adjustable. Surprisingly, there are foam rings inside the fork lower. They measure about five millimeters, but it looks like there's enough space for 10 millimeter ones. So here it is. This is the fork completely disassembled. Taking a closer look at 140 millimeters of travel, there's two spacers installed. You have about 127 millimeters of insertion of the lower fork. Now we remove those two spacers, we're gonna lose about 20 millimeters of insertion, bringing us to about 108 here, but it might be a worthwhile experiment to try to get 160 millimeters of travel. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. The next videos are gonna be about painting the fork lower. We're gonna be reassembling the fork, adjusting the travel. So please like, subscribe, Thank you guys for watching.